Okay, let's take a closer look at how to tackle some of the questions on the MTEL test. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you so we can take a look at these slides. Okay. I mentioned earlier that um, it's important after you've done the pre-reading for each passage that you look at the six questions. You wanna read each of the questions and take some time to make sure that you understand the question. In some cases, they will have phrased it in such a way that it's unnecessarily difficult to understand. It's a very long phrase or long question. And if you think about it a little bit, you can shorten it into something that's easier to understand and easier to remember as you're doing the reading. In other cases, um, for example, on the vocabulary questions, the word in the passage that you'll have to define is always underlined. So you'll know when you come to that word that it's going to be one of the vocabulary questions. And sometimes it's a good idea to try to answer that question right when you're reading that sentence or in that paragraph, because then you're best able to know what the uh, context is for that question. You also have the ability to take notes either uh, with the materials they give you if you're in person or um, on a scratch pad if you're doing it online. This can be helpful to reinforce for yourself what the questions are as you're doing the reading. Of course, you wanna look at all of the questions so you don't miss any. Talked about answering them as you go. Okay, so there's, I mentioned that there are six types of questions and for each reading, there are six questions. So there will be one of each of these six types of questions. And what I wanna do now is to take a deeper dive into each one of these questions to give you some specific strategies for each type of question. Okay, let's begin with the main idea. So this question is put two different ways. The first one and the most common one is, which of the following statements best expresses the main idea of the passage? And what I've provided here or tried to provide for you is a diagram that gives you the structure of the way these passages are organized. All of them will have a title, an introductory paragraph, and somewhere between two and five detail supporting paragraphs, finishing with a concluding paragraph. So if you're looking for the main idea, there are certain places that are best to look for. Okay, and they include the title, which is obvious. Secondly, the introduction, but especially the last sentence of the introduction, which is where writers often put their thesis statement. So you wanna pay close attention to the end of the introductory paragraph. But by far, the reason I bolded this is because the conclusion, the concluding paragraph is actually the best place to look for the answer to this particular question. And looking at many, many practice tests, um, whenever I see this question and I look for the answer, I see that the correct answer is actually provided in the last paragraph. So A, B, C, and D, look at each one of them. One of them will connect to the concluding paragraph. And that is typically the right answer. You wanna be careful about choices that connect with these detail supporting paragraph, which probably three out of the four will. And it'll be tempting to pick those because you'll remember that the author did talk about these points. But in every case, if you can locate these um, particular items in the body of the, the essay, as opposed to the conclusion, it's going to be the wrong answer. So you wanna avoid choices that connect with the detail supporting paragraphs. Okay, the other way this type of question is phrased is like this. Which of the following statements from paragraph two of the passage best expresses the main idea of the paragraph? So here we're dealing with, instead of the entire passage, just an individual paragraph. So normally, if you wanted to know what a paragraph was about, you would look to the topic sentence 
Or in some cases, you might want to look in the concluding sentence. Oddly, after looking at many practice tests, almost never have I found the correct answer in either of these two places. So good to know going in. Instead, they're looking for something that the writer has framed in the body of the paragraph, something I've chosen to call the most important idea. So when you're trying to determine what the most important idea is, here are some things to look for. Is there an idea that has a very strong connection with the theme or the thesis or the conclusion that the author draws? If you can find that in the paragraph, that's a good candidate for the main idea of the paragraph. Secondly, look for sentences that have words such as however, or yet, or but, often beginning the sentence. When you see that, you can be sure that the author is saying something that's very important because they're actually reversing course on something they said earlier. So that is something to look for. Thirdly, I've noticed that if the writer raises a question in the body of the paragraph, the correct answer to the main idea for that paragraph is actually the question that has been raised. And in all cases, you want to be looking for ideas within the paragraph rather than places where the writer has provided evidence to support his idea or examples that illustrate the idea. And I'm going to stop there.